I'm still trying to figure out my microphone. Yeah, you'd think after two and a half years we'd have figured this out, but... You'd think after two and a half years we would know how to... Yeah, exactly what you were going to say. I just wanted to steal your thunder. Great, thanks. You're welcome. How are things on your end? Well, you got a <sighs> whopping non-migraine, so me, I guess they're good, not great. Let me creak this. Oh, okay. Um, I'm good. How are you doing? Um, I'm fine. Okay. Uh, yesterday was Halloween. Yes. Which means it was the end of spooky season. It's a little bit sad, but I'm. I'm. Re- I'm re- it's like climatic. I'm ready for Christmas, so. I'm ready for Thanksgiving, not Christmas. I'm ready for Christmas. I'm ready for all the fall harvesty stuff. Uh, yeah, well, that for sure too. Like separ- independent from the spooky things. Um, I would say happy belated friend anniversary. However, unfortunately, friend anniversary is canceled from here on out. Why? Well, let me tell you why. First of all, there's no such. Th- it's gonna happen next October 30th. Will be a day. Well, this October 30th was not a day. Because here's what happened. I I was, I put it in my calendar. I put it everywhere. I wrote it in my to-do list. I put it, I texted myself. I was like, you have to remember. So I posted this lovely tribute to M and all our love. And then I didn't hear anything, didn't hear anything. Then the next day I looked at the post and I was like, damn, M still hasn't even liked this post. And then I went on Twitter and everyone said, October 30th is National Appreciate M Day. And I went, well, no wonder M bailed on me. First of all, I don't even know if I saw your post on Instagram. Bullshit. Did you post it? I, uh, you obviously posted it. Well, listen to this. I, I literally, I'm sorry. I literally texted you about the post. So you can't even with that. What did you say? I said, oh, I used that photo from Haley's photo shoot. Oh, right, right, right. You did. Yes, okay. I did. That was and my bad. So then I checked this morning. You still haven't liked it. And I was like, well, screw you. So I'm not liking your posts either. Okay. That's <laughs> so the Gemini. I know. And I went on Twitter and everyone's like, it's National M Day. And I was like, every day is National M Day. Give me my friend anniversary back. To be fair, I don't know what happened. I do. I, I know what happened. Let's see if our stories compare. Okay. Um. So... First of all, I genuinely don't know what happened in the beginning, but I went on Twitter and like five tweets in a row that I found or five mentions in a row were all people admitting they had crushes on me. Oh, you guys are creepy. And I have like an ego complex. So if you ever say anything nice about me, I just retweet it. And I took a screenshot of like all of them like at one time and then posted that. And I was like, what is going on Twitter? Like people are being super friendly today. And then from there, it spiraled into yeah. everyone wanting to get on board. Yeah, but do you want to know the, t- the worst part of all is how it all started? How did it start? It's because of me. What'd you do? Somebody tweeted at, and nobody ever has like a crush on me or thinks I'm like the funny, cute one. And so I, somebody tweeted at me, oh, Christine's so cute. I have a crush on her. And I went, oh my God, like nobody ever says that. So I retweeted it and I was like, that's so sweet. Nobody ever has a crush on me. And everyone goes, well, I have a crush on M. And then oh. it fucking went... I see now. Opposite direction. And then my feelings were really hurt. And so I just sat there quietly. To be fair, I've already told you this too, but for a split second when I met Christine, I had a crush on her too. Oh, bullshit. I did. We've talked about this. I don't remember talking about this, much like you don't remember my Instagram post. I had a crush on you for a solid hour. And then... (laughs) And then you heard me speak and you went, oh no. (laughs) It was the day that grad school started and I remember thinking you were the prettiest girl in the room. That is very sweet. And then I... I hope nobody from our grad program listens to this because... Listen. I know what it feels like to be second best. I thought... Okay, I... I thought you were numero uno, champ. Well, then I... But then... (laughs) But then you said you had a boyfriend. I was like, okay, Vito. Aw, well, I appreciate that. See, now you're just trying to hype me up here. I'm like... Everyone on Twitter was like, oh, Christine, but you'd be a great friend. I'm like, do you know how many I got that just said, you'd be a great friend? I was like, okay. And someone said, well, you're married. And I was like, well, M's basically married, so fuck off. Anyway. I'm so sorry that that happened. Anyway, I just felt, and then I was like, M still hasn't liked, and then I got it all in my head, and I got really upset. Oh, I'm so sorry. And then I went to a Halloween party, and I was like, standing there as Tina, and I started getting M mentioned you in their story. And it was like, I was like, well... I have to pretend to be social now, so I haven't uh, actually interacted with any of it, and I'm Now sorry. I'm seeing all the story. No, on my end, I felt bad because I ha- I knew that it was a day after our friend anniversary, and the day of, 
I had started going through all these pictures and then it just cascaded into me looking through every picture of us. And I was like, okay, I'll just post it in the morning. And then morning came. And then I, it like, I just kept thinking, oh, I'll do it in a second. I'll do it in a second. It didn't happen until like 10 o'clock at night. And then I was like, I got to get through these fucking pictures because I had narrowed them down to like from hundreds to 50. And I was like, I still can't get those on one post. And 54, then I, sp- I think. And then I spent <laughs> another hour trying to get them down to 10 because that's all Instagram funny. allows. And then I just was like, fuck it. And I just posted all of them in my story. Yeah, but I used a, I tried. <laughs> I know. I used a new one because I was like, if I go down the rabbit hole, like I'm never coming back. It took me 48 hours to get out of the rabbit hole. Yeah. It's and rough. I'm still not even really pleased because I their Instagram should let me post as many I pictures know. as it's I want. It's a little bit unfair. Well, I'm still not verified if that makes you feel any better. Um, Which I'm angry about at this point. Instagram. I, mean, I just feel like, you know, I at this point. Maybe I, the world just doesn't want you to be um, verified. I concede to you. You win. <laughs> I don't think I win. I'm just the sidekick who's not verified. To be fair, I have no, like, when it comes to, I didn't do anything special or different. I literally just put it in. Maybe there's a post that's, like, not. Oh, that makes me feel better. Um, no, 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 no. Maybe there's, like, a post that's uh, not tasteful on your page. And Instagram saw it and was like, no. Oh, God. You know? If not tasteful. Well, somebody figure <laughs> Any out. Any picture with your face. Yeah, I was like, look at, look at it. <laughs> anyway. It has Sorry. been three years. Okay, so happy three years. Uh, this is exactly pretty much how I imagined three years would be, is me bickering. <laughs> me holding a grudge for three days and not telling you, and then bickering. We really do are a married couple in many I ways. I, like, hold on to it, and I get angry, and then I'm like, Em didn't do any. Like, literally, well, here's the thing. I did do something. I re- I, 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 I pulled the trigger, and it and then it spiraled in a way I did not well, see coming. Well, I hadn't heard from you all day. And then I, you didn't like my post, and then you didn't comment, you didn't say anything. And then I was like, I must be really busy. And then I went on Twitter, and it was like 400 tweets <laughs> that M is tweeting all day long. And I was like, well, great. So M's over there fucking retweeting. I'm so oh, sorry. I have sex dreams about you. Uh. <laughs> and I'm like, really? And That's I, only happened once, to be fair, and that I, I know of. And I fucking put, um, I tweeted something obnoxious because I was like, well, fine. And then I wrote, stop stealing my friend anniversary, everyone, or something. And everyone's like, oh, Christine, you're great, too. And I was like, well, I brought myself You have a, a spectacular personality. Yeah. You, <laughs> but not even that. Everyone's like, M's the funny one. I was like, oh, I don't have any, I don't even get to be the funny one. To be fair, but you also have been in someone's yearbook. You've been someone's yearbook quote. Like That's senior true. quote. I'm pretty proud of that. Listen. You've got your own accomplishments. Like a chemical You're just... engineer major or something. I was like, wow, I don't deserve that. <laughs> so hers should be like E equals MC squared or some shit, but instead it's listen. <laughs> it's listen. E equals MC squared. I, it's good job. the farthest I can go. Um to set the mood for our friend anniversary, I did put up a picture of Kremit that apparently isn't Kremit. Okay, so here's the thing. <laughs> Oh, when, I feel like such a fool. When we were in New York, like a whole year ago, oh literally. Oh my God, last November. Uh, we, I came across something that I used often in high school called morphthing.com, mm-hmm. where you can take your face and someone else's so face. So fun. And make a baby mm-hmm. and see what your baby would look like. And that was like the thing to do uh, in high school. I remember even the me. Dave and Busters had one that you could do at, in Cincinnati and you it would like print it out. And I still have all these creepy printouts of my friends and I like with morph babies yeah. like they printed them it's out fun yeah. fun to see what they would look like and they're always a little janky looking like you like the baby's not like you kind of don't love it entirely no you can't relate like, there's to like a, it there's like many weird like it's like what they say about demons like pretending to be human but something that's exact. it looks like yeah. a demon pre- posing as a human like the one that i posted it has teeth and i'm like okay. neither one of us okay you go and explain it first so we and when we were in new york we shared a hotel room and we were very slap happy and i just rediscovered morph thing <laughs> and we made a baby together um we were in a hotel room. what if you cut that we were in a hotel room we, were, we made a baby together. we were in a hotel room christine was a little drunk and we did our best at making a baby literally all of that is true <laughs> <laughs> i can neither deny or deny that um and the baby didn't come out right it, well it, that's one way to <laughs> uh we ended up making a baby that we named Kremit. I'll put it here on the green screen. Okay, put your, up the right one because for your viewing pleasure. Uh, when so we had we had this little baby named Kremit who looked creepily like us as an adult, but it's, as as yeah. a baby, it didn't look like us <laughs> at all. Really cool. And I guess you could even say the baby looked forgettable because yeah. <laughs> today I come into the studio and Christine has posted. <laughs> 
a baby that she thinks is Kremen. <laughs> And I look at it. It was supposed to be like a happy friend anniversary from me and our child. And I was like, "What baby is that? Why you literally were, were like, what did you do? Like, why is that? Why is there a random baby on the computer screen? You were like, that's our baby. And I was like, that's not our baby. So I was like, you don't recognize our own, your own child. And I was like, oh, no, it literally was a different skin Wait, color. But it was a different. But we made that one, too. And I'm you keep, we made a lot of babies that night. Or we certainly tried rejecting this baby. And I reject that as hurt. my that's not my it's baby. hurtful. I like that baby too. That baby was born with a full set of adult human teeth. That's the alarm. <laughs> this is what that baby was, by the way. That's alarming because Blaze looked at it and went, "Neither of." He's like, "There's a lot wrong with it." I was like, "I know." And he's like, "Neither of you are showing your teeth in the photos that you're morphing." And then this baby has like giant adult. The teeth. one out of three of you that should not have teeth yes. has the most teeth. Has like a full set of pearly whites. Um, so if you would like a side by side of actual cremit versus uh what i thought was cremit and so, so i really thought like maybe this was a whole new baby that she, maybe she's surprising <laughs> me that we're expecting <laughs> but it was just who she literally thought was cremit and i was like that's not our fucking I was like, baby it's our baby and you're like that's not our baby i was like don't you so remember i know it's been a year but that's not our that's child so sad and then we oh god and we said, reg- but look we recycle this birthday um like string where you can like arrange the letters in a certain way so it spells out whatever you want i bought it for alexander's birthday and we're at christine 2020 and it was time to finally take that down so the banner now says kremit but it's not even spelled right and i was like you can't even (laughs) fucking spell our baby's name the right way and then i said that is how we spelled it and you're like no it's not and i was like no it is and then i i looked i was like look i checked my messages and the only time it was ever written was me writing it at 11 55 no that would 2.55 a.m. Yeah. in New York. Probably and a little drunk. The night we did this, and I just wrote Kremit, yeah. and I spelled and it wrong. It's definitely not spelled how it should be spelled. And uh, But so you don't even know what our baby looks like, and you certainly don't know how to spell the name. And then Em just turned to me and goes, you're the worst mother. <laughs> it's like, it's oh. like, if we ever have a baby together, I'm naming it and taking a lot of pictures <laughs> so you can't forget. <laughs> and throwing its birthday they parties, because like. clearly I don't know what I'm doing. Exactly. It's, oh my God, this thing is called literally baby maker. This is disturbing. <laughs> anyway, but there is a video on Em's Instagram of, um, we can hey, repost it. Well, speak of disturbing content, how did you get verified with that fucking cremit thing? And I won't get verified. That's the truth. That is the I, truth. I have no idea. That should have been flagged by someone. I, I'll flag it <laughs> until I get verified. I'm going to flag you. Oh, great. 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 So we'll both <laughs> drop down to the same yeah. level. You know, we drag each other down. Oh, of course, because it's been three years and uh, we're married. All right. So with a beautiful child that I forget what it looks like exactly anyway welcome to our show it's called and that's why you drink <laughs> it's about true crime and paranormal things it is it is it is it is uh if you are new here sorry oh you're gone already i'm you've sure you've already clocked out so you've... everyone here is just an og listener at this point you heard baby with teeth and you were like goodbye <laughs> although i'd like to think we brought in a little a little drama to the new people of like oh these podcasters are like doing it in the hotel room together oh, that's true we did create our own weird made-up um reality show that then ended up not being <laughs> as dramatic as we made it sound just one episode out there and it's right now and it's pretty exciting um i don't think i have anything to update you on i don't think i do i mean i did i was gonna yell at you about how everyone loves you more than me but then i was like that is the most gemini bullshit ever so. here's the most gemini bullshit saying it here so that next week when this comes out it's just gonna be a sea of love for no, you but on see, Twitter. I, I tried that see i tried that backhanded method and everyone <laughs> went you'd be a great drunk friend and i was like oh oh and my brother goes to be fair that is the brand you built and i was like fuck <laughs> also if i had ever experienced being drunk i with just guessing Nobody would want to be my friend. I have a hunch I would not be a fun drunk. You would be, I think. I think we would be set the world literally on fire and not in a fun way, like in a very, very dangerous way. We would way. just like throw gas everywhere yeah. and light the fucking match. Oh, yeah. And walk away. And grab Kremit and run. Yeah. <laughs> Except we'd grab I'd the grab wrong the baby. Wrong <laughs> You'd grab the wrong one with me if you were drunk. We'd both hold the baby and I'd be like, we only have one together. Someone's Wait. wrong and it's not me. <laughs> oh, my God. Leave that one. Put be- that baby Leave down. the one with teeth behind. <laughs> <laughs> i'm so sorry anyway i'm sorry that i'm such a fucking baby I, it does not matter what people on the internet think and i think that you are very rugged handsome and cute hey! and everyone knows that and i think i just got it i got i was like oh well i'm just i was just i was just sad because i was like well i love em and em's not loving me back on our friend anniversary 
that was my bad, to be fair. I that was no one else's fault except my own being but negligent. I couldn't be mad anymore because I got all these things that were like, and posted about you. And I was like, well, oh, now I'm, my Gemini Thank ego, God I slapped a Band-Aid on that one yeah, then. Yeah, it's just going to fill right back up. So <laughs> anyway, here we are. I'll piss you off somehow in an hour. <laughs> don't worry. Um, okay, so this story is... Uh, oh, wait. Oh, uh, sorry. I have one more announcement. You've got to be kidding me. I know. Okay, M was on Beach Too Sandy this week. I, oh. I, I, pro- I promised I would mention this. I'm so sorry. Wow, I promised myself I would mention it too, and I did not do it. I had a blast on Beach Too Sandy. If you don't... M was our if, first, like, celebrity guest. <laughs> that's what they call it me. It was so exciting. If you don't know what Beach Too Sandy is, um, there's a really awesome host named Alexander <laughs> Schieffer and his, like, really horrific sister tries to be a, a guest host on she it. She seems like a good drunk friend, I guess. <laughs> she, she seems like she'll be an excellent mother. Um, <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. But no, I had a blast. It was super duper fun. If uh, you don't listen to it already, you should, especially my story. I talk about some behind the scenes things about There's my an life. exclusive story, and it is of M getting detained by the police during a ghost hunt. And it is an ex- a Beach Too Sandy exclusive that we weren't even expecting. I thought it was, I didn't even know it was It was a friendship exclusive. I thought you already knew about I it. Did, I never had heard it before. So I was like, It's usually what I lead with. Uh, I guess I led with other things well, instead, I, like being a fucking clown. I, <laughs> also, I disarmed you with my hour of charm back in grad That's what it is. <laughs> yeah, disarming is <laughs> definitely the word I would use for you. <laughs> Oh, God. Uh, you had, like, a vision of what our future child would look like, and you were like, fuck that. Yeah, I was like, all of a sudden I'm forgetting that, that I've almost been arrested. Oh, dear. Anyway, so that so that was really fun. You can look at that on wherever you listen to podcasts. I'm not good at YouTube. Is there any way to put a link here oh, for that? I'll put it in the show notes, or whatever okay. that is, down there. Or it's in the sh- I'll tell you, or I'll put it in the show notes, too, of the podcast. But yeah, just Beach Too Sandy Water Too Wet and M is our first. And it was a whole Halloween extravaganza. Where- also, I read reviews about myself. That's which true. There's nothing scarier than in real time being given a microphone and then a, <laughs> a potential criticism about yourself from, like, eight years ago. I literally went and found reviews. Like, I, like, was searching Google. I've gotten really good at searching for very specific <clears throat> things on the internet. Oh, yeah. Christine was like, oh, I found out where you worked in 2012. And I was like, how did you find that? Oh, and she was like, don't worry. I went digging. And then I found reviews about M as a Segway tour guide. They were all five star. Like, there were no negative ones. Like, I'm not even making that up. There were not. Not trying to toot my own horn here, but I was an excellent Segway tour guide. You were, apparently. Yeah. Um, I always told myself one day when I had enough money, I'd buy a Segway. But then now it's like 2019. And there's like hoverboards and shit. And now I think like a Segway would make yeah, me look like a grandpa. Huh? Mm. Anyway, anyway, if you'd like to give me a segue, I'll take it. Okay. Um, this story is from Portland, Oregon. Oh, I really hope I haven't done it. Um, I don't think I have. It all sounded new to me. Okay. But also after 200 episodes, who's to say? Everything sounds new to us. <laughs> Everything sounds old and new. Old too, yeah. Um, this is the story of the... I'm sorry. The Pittock Mansion or the Pittock Mansion? I think Pittock, right? I have a feeling it's not Pittock, but... It's, it's if you were to look at it phonetically, it looks like Pit Talk yeah. Mansion. I would say Pittock. I think Pittock sounds yeah. right. We should have asked we're... Allie before she left. That's where she's from. She should have just asked Google and been or, prepared. Or that. that could have been a thing you could have done. <clears throat> I actively chose to not do that. You don't want to break the You're trend. definitely, if there if you're one thing between the two of us, you're definitely the smart one, I'll tell you that. Well, that doesn't get apparently very much on Twitter, so... Also, there was one person who said that they really like when you uh, speak German, and I was like, listen, I've been trying to force you to speak more German, and I gave up. To be fair, that person also said, I don't care what anyone else says. I like when Christine... And I was like, what is everyone else saying? (laughs) I'm not going to tell you, because we all talk about you when you're not around. Apparently, there's a whole cult that I'm just not a part of. I just, I'm like, who... I I don't know what happened. I just... I have heard that um, my fan club is called The Empire. Okay, get out of here. (laughs) So I like to think amongst The Empire, they just discuss how, like, you've got your German accent and your brains, and that's about it. I know. It's so sad. I just sit in the corner. Someone said, well, anytime M doesn't laugh at your joke, just know I'm laughing. And I was like, okay, Uh, I will. And by the way, if I'm never laughing at Christine's joke, it's because I've already heard it a bajillion times. (laughs) It's not because it's not funny. It's because I've grown tired. Oh, Lord. Anyway. I've grown weary. So here is the Piddick Mansion. Um, It is one of the finest historic houses in Oregon and one of the most haunted houses in the United States, allegedly. Really? Um, That is what I've been told on Google. Okay. Uh, It has been owned by, uh, it was owned by a couple named Henry and Georgiana, Georgiana Pittock in the early 1900s. 
Um, I keep wanting to say Georgina, and I know I'm wrong. Henry and Georgiana. Okay. Um, in the early 1900s. So Henry was born in London, but he grew up in Pittsburgh. Um, he was born in 1853, and at 19 years old, he headed west on the Oregon Trail. Oh, fun. Which I recently played. Mm-hmm. Died quickly. I watched your, you had a whole saga of it. Oh, you died the yeah, first. You named me and I just died. And I thought this is just exactly what I figured. Would I've happen. been thinking about re-releasing those on my Insta story because I love the, the whole pro the like the progress or I was degress, like, out at will. dinner with my mom or something. And I was like, I'm sorry, mom. I have to look at this. Like something's happening. It was just everyone that I know and love were, uh, were uh-huh. the characters and everyone just like flies and em was just cackling the whole time <laughs> i was i died of dysentery immediately also allison um one of my favorite and least favorite things about her is that she uh grew up kind of away from pop culture and so she d- a lot of references she's learning now at 28 years old and so she never once ever played organ trail um and i got the handheld uh organ trail recently gave it to her one immediately she's t- never See, lost a game the universe couldn't let that much power happen under one roof as <laughs> she, a child that's exactly but that's it. why we were friends because i was like i thought i was the only one who didn't understand and then she even more didn't understand pop culture references now which like, is amazing because you at least like grew up in germany for a second like sort at, of. you have a reason to not know she's just like i told her the jonas brothers were in town last week and she was like i I kind of know who they are. And I was what? like, what is going on? All right, that's pushing She it. didn't even know all their names. I lost my mind. Al pal. Anyway. Anyway. Henry made it through on the Oregon Trail at 19, just like Allison. Um, <laughs> and a year later, his wife, Georgiana, who at the time was Georgiana Burton, um, also headed west from Missouri with her family. Okay. Um, they met in Portland. And in 1860, they got married and had six kids. Aw. Big year. No, I'm just kidding. Wow. Um, oh, yeah, I was like, wait. <laughs> all at once. Um, so Henry became one of the wealthiest men in Oregon at the time. Him and Georgiana were pillars in the community, oh. which should, I know is usually a trigger phrase for us because that means they're going to be serial killers at the end that of this. That literally is in my notes today. Yeah. It just if you're new here, pillars in the community usually means you're also a murderer. Usually a bad thing. Um, but in this case, they were just pillars in the community. Oh, I literally thought they were about to be murderers. And I was like, this I, I said it and I was like, <laughs> I really struck a chord. I know I did. So uh, Henry was a typesetter at the Oregonian newspaper. OK. Um, and five months after his wedding, he actually bought the company at 26 years old. Oh, nice. And he made it into the successful newspaper that it became. So cool. It, any success from it started with him. Okay. Um, he also invested in real estate, banking, railroads, steamboats, sh- <laughs> silver mining, and sheep ranching. Okay. Um, and the paper industry. So I like to think he's the Michael Scott of this story. I love it. Um, he was also part of the first expedition to climb uh, Mount Hood and helped found the Mazama, Mazamas Climbing Club. Sure. I guess that's a thing in Portland. Um. Mazamas. <laughs> the Mazamas, <laughs> I guess. Um, Georgiana was also a pillar in the community. She founded charities and organizations, including the Ladies Relief Society, the Women's Union, um, the Martha Washington Home, which was for single and self-supporting women. Um, she also started the Portland Rose Society and the Portland Rose Festival. It started in 1889 because of her. And Henry actually led a few of those. And I think that's still a thing today, the Portland Rose Festival. Cool. Um, in 1909, uh, Henry wanted... This is when they, uh, after they've lived together and had their kids, their next big dream is this retirement home that's a, quote, mansion on the hill. Um, And they want to retire in it, and they wanted to have views of Portland, um, Willamette River, and the Cascade Mountains, so tall order. Mm -hmm. Um, And they hired an architect named Edward T. Folk. Um, But in one article, I did find that his name was not Edward Folk, but Frank Folks. Oh. So... That was one compared to many that said Edward T. Folk. So I'm going to stick with that. <clears throat> um, but so this architect designed the mansion from scratch. Um, this They started in 1909 and it was completed um, in 1914. Wow. Okay. Um, so, excuse me. So Folk made it look uh, unique with, it had square walls, but a circular interior. So it was, what? everything looked a little funky. Plus they built rooms and hallways Instead of, um, like, making, like, just straight hallways that were kind of perpendicular with each other to find rooms. Right. Everything was built around the central grand staircase. So, think, like, spokes on a wheel. <gasps> oh, So, the central staircase, cool. and then you have to, everything grew out from that. That's kind of neat. 
super swanky. Mm-hmm. Um, also, the mansion, fun fact, was built on 46 acres. It was on a 1,000 foot peak in the West Hills, or in, I'm sorry, in the town West Hills. Okay. Um, it was 16,000 square foot. Whoa. 22 rooms. It had a library, a smoking room, a music room. And it was very progressive um, technologically at the time. Ooh. It had a, this was 1914, it had a central vacuum system, an intercom system, individual room thermostats. What? A three-car garage, a greenhouse, and I don't know what this is, but I would like them too. Um, two sleeping porches. Oh, I have a, you don't know a sleeping porch? Do you sleep on the porch? Yeah, so, well, we had one growing up. Um, it's like a, a screened-in um like on our at our house, it was on the second floor, and it was kind of like a room that had screens, and we would like sleep. Yeah, you could sleep out there, like in the summer or when it was like cool at night, and you like. I, I don't, I've I never mean, heard of this. I'm like I don't know if that's a thing, but we had one, and it's like usually I think what it is, it's usually um screened off like a screened in porch. Right. Yeah, I just called it a screen room. Am I wrong? I don't know. I, we I don't called know. it a screen. Uh, but also, I would never sleep on that. That's like. I'm thinking like, so my childhood room, my childhood house, which you have seen Mm -hmm. in the backyard, we have a pool and instead of just walking directly into the house, there's a, an attached screened room where you can like, it has wooden floors with a table. I think that's like a, like a port, like a screened in room, like a, but I think a sleeping porch is like, like, like what kind of floors? Oh, like at least ours was upstairs. It was like a room attached to the second floor and it had screened windows or walls or something i don't remember totally but my dad would like we'd go in there and sleep in the summertime and like you could hear the crickets and stuff but you'd be i have no idea what's going i have to look this up i always thought maybe this was a weird bernie schieffer thing but like (laughs) i think we called it a sleeping porch so i i mean it was either bernie schieffer or edward folk who knows maybe listen maybe they're the same person maybe they're related anyway maybe i'm the only person on earth who doesn't know what a sleeping porch is i thought it was like a southern thing that's why i was surprised that you didn't know maybe it Maybe it's, I just know, I know it as a different word. Maybe. We'll get back to it. Anyway. Um, it also was, the house was designed to be cooled by morning airflow. So it actually was cooler than most homes at the time. Oh, cool. In the summer. Um, it had, <laughs> I just said, oh, cool. I heard it. So stupid. And I jumped right over So it. stupid. Uh, it had oak paneled cabinets, marble floors, and modern, amen- modern amenities like an Otis elevator and dumbwaiter. Holy crap. Marble flooring too. It's fancy. Um, It also had, this I don't understand, and I don't know how on earth this works, but they had a private shower that was like, quote, a human car wash with horizontal needle sprays to reach all body parts, (laughs) including a toe tester and liver spray. Okay, well, that last part kind of makes you want to die. Um, I guess like just the section of the... Liver spray. What? Why would you call it that? Why would you just call it a stomach spray? That's at least illiterate. Oh, like a tummy... Alliteration. A tummy tap. A tummy spray. Not a fucking... Tummy tap. Liver spray. A water. Nope, I can't think of it. Sprinkler. A belly bidet. <laughs> anyway, no, um, yeah, that's it. You, but you so it. it's it's got it's got one of those showers where they've got, I assume, just um, you're getting sprayed in every direction. I've never used one of those. Well, I've used one once and I it was one divine. Time. It's really wild. It's kind of like you're standing in a storm. <clears throat> it feels like you're just getting rained on from every direction. I mean, yeah, you are. I guess. Yeah. I liked it. I hope I to have want one of those. That, yeah. Geo agrees. Yeah. So you're gonna park again? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I wish. Please. He's saying belly bidet. He's like, belly's for everyone. (laughs) All right. Uh, The entryway, I wish I wanted to take a, uh, I wanted to look at a picture of this. Maybe if we find a picture, we can put it up later. But um, I wish I had under, I wish I'd looked at a picture to understand this better, but it sounds pretty simple. Apparently the entryway of the, of this mansion on the ceiling, it was covered in foil. Whoa. Um, apparently that was a nod. It was intentionally done just as a nod to Georgiana being raised in a poor family when she had to save foil from tea boxes. I just got chills for some reason. I don't know why. I just think that's like so weird and poignant. Yeah. And, and also like, it was really sentimental like and like touching. Yeah. It's like, look where we've come from or. Oh yeah. <laughs> Let's put like plaster foil on the ceiling. Right. <laughs> that's an interesting way to. Um, so in 1914, like I said, the construction was completed. It was actually completed on Henry and Georgiana's 50th anniversary. 
Um, Henry and Georgiana moved in with eight other family members. I don't know who those were. Uh, they just, I guess they had a mansion now and they were like, come on down. They're like, you have a sleeping porch. I'm coming in. <laughs> coming in hot. I was one of the eight actually. And I only came because I wanted to know what a sleeping porch was. Um, no, you came for the belly bidet. We all know. Wait that. a minute. Two things. I lied. Um, only five years after moving in, Henry and Georgiana had both passed. Almost only five years oh. into this whole because they got married he was 26 so then 50 years later 76 so that makes sense so it was completed when he was 76 they got married in 1860 and then yeah i guess he was 20 i have the dates right here okay so actually this will confirm or deny if my notes are good if the, if the dates add up but um across the board i got um on different articles that only five years after moving in henry and uh, georgiana both passed in 1918, Georgiana passed at 72, and a year later, Henry died at 84. Oh. So 1919. And he was born in 1853. Well, if you think I'm going to do that math, you're very okay. wrong. I'm sorry. I don't know if enough. If you don't, if you think my math <laughs> is wrong, it probably is. Um, but those were the general times that I was together. So the mansion stayed in the family for three generations, um, but the cost of upkeep was so expensive that their grandson or their great grandson, um, because three generations later, so their okay sons, son, son, um, tried selling it in 1958. Uh, the mansion was not selling, and so it ended up empty for four years. Whoa! And also in 1962, it was hit by the Columbus Day storm, oh. where there were hurricane force winds that caused roof tile water. Uh, Roof tile, window pane, and water damage. Um, Not the foil. <laughs> <laughs> truly. <laughs> and uh, so in two years later, 1964, the mansion was in such poor condition by that point that uh, the town almost just tore it down and turned it into a subdivision. Oh, no. Yeah. But That's terrible. The Portland community helped the city raise funds to buy the mansion um, for $225,000. And uh I got different numbers on different articles, but somewhere around $70,000 was raised by the citizens alone in three months. Wow. So they all really worked together. That's awesome. Um, the work took 15 months to restore the entire place, but in 1965, it opened to the public as a museum. And three years later, in 1968, a nonprofit called the Pittock Mansion Society was formed to furnish the mansion, collect funds, and <laughs> provide educational programs. <laughs> PMS. <laughs> PMS. My favorite. Uh, especially if they're having like a bad month you know? oh yeah that Columbus Day storm you know what I mean <laughs> Aunt Flo is in town and she's going by the Columbus storm this year that sleeping porch is ready and waiting <laughs> so in 1974 uh, it was put on the National Register of Historic Places and in 2007 the PMS took over preservation and day to day operations from Portland Parks and Recs and apparently still does oh, okay. um, so it's still in charge of it um, the Pittock Mansion now hosts, on average, 80,000 visitors annually and hosts uh, public and self-guided tours. Cool. Uh, this has really nothing to do with the ghosts, but I wanted to bring it up on principle because it seemed fun. Um, the Pittock Mansion is closed on Christmas, but they still hold holiday events here, including one called a very Portland Christmas display. Shut up. That has been going on for over 80 years. <gasps> and apparently it, uh, at this display... They show iconic, like they decorate it, uh, I guess, different rooms as different themes and iconic events. Uh, they also have uh, honored certain people from Portland cool. in their display. So it includes everything from, oh, I'm sorry, that was part of the original sentence. And then I decided which two I was going to talk about. So it, it includes many things, including <laughs> a uh, Darcel themed room. Do you know who Darcel is? I don't. Darcel 15. It's XV. Uh, Darcel is Walter Cole. He's 89 and he holds the Guinness world record for the world's oldest drag queen. Shut up. And they have a whole Darcel themed room. Wait, that's so cool. Is he from Portland? From Portland. And okay. also I think it's like a double whammy record because he's the oldest by an age. He's 89 at the time. I think he was 86 when he won the record. Wow. Um, but he also has been doing drag for like 50 something years. Wow. Um, he also owns a, a, he bought out a restaurant and then changed it into show place. And it's the, it has hosted the longest running drag show on the West coast. And he's so famous for being a drag queen that they actually recently created a musical about him called Darcel the musical. God. Wow. Another, uh, significant... I want to see that room by the way. Sorry. I do I too. See that I hope it's just like a bunch of legs and fishnets or something. Oh yeah. Um, 
the this Christmas display. By the way, Christmas like the reason for the season, Darcel. Oh yeah, I mean, um, can't have one without the other. Also, the event also gives a nod to another Portland icon, um, Packy the elephant, oh, who I know you'll care about because you love elephants so deeply. So in 2016, um, he is an Asian elephant named Packy, um, and at, okay, so in 2016. At the Oregon Zoo, that's where Packy lives, Packy was 54 years old, and he was known as the oldest of his species in the Northern Hemisphere. In 1962, Packy was born and became the first elephant born in captivity in the U.S. in 44 years. Wow. And he gained international fame and was even featured in an 11-page spread in Life magazine. Wow. His birth helped scientists better understand Asian elephants uh, in care and welfare needs. Aww. And the Oregon Zoo is recognized worldwide because of Packy for its Asian elephant program. So um, this is just some fun facts. But in 1962 to 1982, in those 20 years, um, 27 Asian elephants were born in North America and 21 of them were born in Portland. So wow. be, I think because once Packy was there, they just kept making sure all the Asian elephants were part of this program. I'm going to cry. I don't even know why, but I'm about to cry. I can tell you why. Because in 2013, Packy uh, contracted tuber- uh, tuberculosis, um, which is common among captive elephants. Uh, and he was on treatments and it was dormant. But in 2016, during a routine test, no. they found out that he, apparently it had become active or the strain had become active. And they were to euthanize him. And it caused a lot of controversy, apparently, because there were some elephant biologists who actually say that Packy didn't show any actual symptoms of tuberculosis. He was very healthy. And they had actually only killed Packy because he was no longer helping make sales and they needed room for new elephants. There's no way. Apparently. I can't believe that. In this article, which was like NBC or like some, it was like a big, I don't know if it was NBC, but it was like a big time news outlet. Um, they were giving lists of how this stuff is actually happening behind the scenes where once an animal is no longer I'm a cash you, cow, they yeah. will breed new ones. This is like, I just, this one of those things. So that may or may not, it seems like most people didn't think that, but also there was a whole Facebook page, uh, like a fan page for <clears throat> Packy where a lot of people, the controversy got kind of heated. Um, oh gosh, um, why are you doing this? Because now they, in honor, always have a Packy the Elephant display for him at the Christmas I event. I hope he's just living his best Packy life. So the Piddick Mansion was also a backdrop in several movies, including First Love, Unhinged, which Unhinged was a slasher movie that was banned in several countries. What? Um, also, The Haunting of Sarah Hardy, Body of Evidence, and it was also the finish line in the 13th season of The Amazing Race. Really? Yep. That's fun. So for the ghosts, there are three entities at the Piddock Mansion. Is it Packy? Can you imagine an elephant ghost? And a drag queen. Oh! Wait a minute. <laughs> wait, trademark, trademark. Wait, wait, wait. TM, 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 TM. Yeah, and then the third one is like us. Like just a combined <laughs> yeah, effort. Yeah, we're just going to insert ourselves into this fun. Just hanging out. You're with the elephant. I'm with the drag queen. Perfect. We're having a blast. Combo. Uh, so the three entities are Henry and Georgiana and Packy. No, I'm kidding. Oh, uh, I'm almost <laughs> screaming. <laughs> It would have been elephantastic. Oh my! Earlier when you said cash cow, I had to bite my own tongue. I was like, you cannot make a <laughs> joke cash right now. Cash elephant. You're literally talking about euthanizing animals. This is not the time. I know. I know. I know. I know. Um, so Henry and Georgiana, I think I I can't confirm this, but I'm pretty sure they died in the mansion. Um, so they are two of the entities there, as well as their head groundskeeper. I don't Ooh, know. Creepy. I don't know his story. Can but you imagine being the couple and you're like, you're there together in the afterlife and then like your groundskeeper's like, I'm here too. Just the third wheel. Just Why like, not? <laughs> stay in the garden, man. Someone needs to keep that bidet clean, I guess. Someone's got to take care of the belly bidet. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, the visitors and staff have seen windows shutting and latching on their own. Um, they have heard heavy footsteps. Mainly the footsteps enter the mansion from the garden through the side door and a Apparently, they think that is the head groundskeeper because that was the path he used to take. Oh, interesting. Um, the footsteps have also been heard in every room of the house and down the hallways. So I think they assume that's like a combo of everyone walking around. Right. Um, the staff have also seen people standing in empty rooms in the mornings during opening where they'll walk in and then turn a corner into what should be like an empty living room. And there's just someone standing there. Oh, yeah. Um, I kind of wish they were doing something with their time, like maybe reading or I don't know if there's just a person just standing yeah, there like the shining twins. It's alarming. Absolutely not. Ugh. 
Um, the visitors have also reported seeing a strange shadow figure out of the corner of their eyes, either standing next to them or walking past and then turning the corner before they can see who it was. Mm. People smell roses, which apparently was Georgiana's favorite flower. And also she did, she founded the Rose Society yeah. and the Rose Festival. Aww. Um, some say that they've actually seen Georgiana herself. Visitors have seen her in the glass reflection um, <gasps> on hanging paintings throughout the building. Oh, ooh! So you're looking at a beautiful painting, and then it's like there's a woman in the glass. Oh, yep. that's freaky. Also, probably standing as a shining twin. Yeah, oh, which yeah. is the worst. It's not like she's also admiring the painting. She's looking at you. Ugh. Um, one woman was actually in the basement taking pictures, and she felt something behind her, and she knew that she wasn't alone. All of a sudden, felt like she was being stared at. She turned around and saw an old woman, and then that woman looked at her. Apparently, some stories uh, say that this woman was floating. She was wearing an old dress, and she instantly vanished away. An employee was closing up one night and was going through each room, turning off every single one of the lights. And once he got to the last light that he needed to turn off, all of the lights in the building turned on all by themselves at the same time. Oh, that's just rude. You just yeah, truly, it's like why, why, why? Because now he on. not only is it inconvenient for him, like he was about to like get home, finally off his shift. He yeah. was like five minutes away from going to Chipotle, <laughs> but now he has to like walk through this house that is now That's also haunted. True, that he does not want to be in. Now and he has to scared. Turn all the lights off again in fear, and then cross his fingers. Right. Oh no, that the Chipotle is still open when he comes <laughs> <when he's> back. <laughs> it's probably not. How horrific. Um. So. Objects on display will reportedly move around the mansion, particularly a childhood portrait of Henry. Oh. They think it's Georgiana trying, like, holding his picture and, like, walking around. Oh. Um, they don't know why this picture is, like, so attached to the spirits, but it seems to be the most moved object compared I to everything else. when objects move. It's such a spooky thing to me. Well, they say that it's supposed to be on the bedroom mantle, but the second you see it and recognize that it's there like apparently it's it's common now for people to look at the mantle and see the picture there and minutes later it's gone and it's somewhere totally different in the house yikes um there are uh i think this was just someone being dramatic and trying to say that they hear footsteps but i do want to mention that uh one of the phrases i saw and like things that visitors report is boots walking without legs. And I'm like, I think that just means footsteps. I don't think anyone has literally seen oh, like Fantasia boots I walking love that. around. Yeah, it is like Fantasia. But it's been said, so I'm going to say it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I like that though. It's like it's like how on Twitter right now, there's that, that trend going around where you could say this and it's like a normal thing to say, or you could say it this way and it is like a totally elaborate version of the same right, sentence. Right, 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 right. It's kind of like instead of footsteps, boots walking without legs. <laughs> Um, uh, there's had, there's been several EVPs, including a man saying, I'm heading back Ooh. and a woman saying, hello, hello, fresh. And this is adorable. And most of my stories don't end this way is that no reports, there are no reports of ghosts that are malicious at all. And no one's ever felt unsafe there. Um, but Henry and Georgiana have both been seen sometimes separate, sometimes spending time together. Oh, um, mediums have come through and said that they have seen and felt both Henry and Georgiana at different times. They say that Henry and Georgiana would like to tell everybody that they are happy and at peace and are just happy to be together. I'm so that's (sighs) precious. And I think, um, I, I think I read this or I might be deciding that I read it. But I would imagine that they really loved this house and they only got to live That's in it for so few years. Maybe yeah. they're just happy people want to come spend time with them. And they're like, oh, well, we worked so hard to get this house. We might as well enjoy it for eternity. Eternity. And also now they put like elephant decorations in it at Christmas time. It's I mean, like now there's a drag queen. This seriously? is like something I never expected in 1914. No. Yeah. Anyway. That's awesome. I like that story a lot. The end. Portland, I love you. Portland, I love Portland you. Portland loves you back. Aww. Portland is a part of your fan club. Yeah. Okay, thanks. No one else, though. You're a big butt. <laughs> I'm glad you're amused. I I'm glad do. the Empire Christine, is amused. Christine, shut up. We love you so, so uh, much. I know. I'm just such a big, sensitive baby. Everyone knows it. I would be, too, though. I, I'm not saying that you're alone in that. If I, If all the same things happened in the same order to me i feel the same way <laughs> it's just hard when a bunch of str- you're like why do i care about what strangers think and then it's like i don't know but you just do 
because you guys matter so much to whatever. us. Whatever. I get to be your best friend. I'm the fucking luckiest. See, this is why they love you. They all go, oh, Em is the best. I can get them to hate me real <laughs> quick. I could say some pretty awful all, things to you. You are the best. Like, you're too skinny and you're too tan. Oh, shut up. <laughs> and your hair is always perfect, you evil bitch. You literally talk about my bald spot and you're still <laughs> the hero of this story. <laughs> you don't have a bald spot. Just a metaphorical one because I annoy you. Just a small one that I try to hide. Under I like these. to think when I when I bother you, I just envision you just like ripping a chunk out of your head. Yep. And I'm like, I did that. Aw, you made that. Yay! Just like how we made Kremit, but you wouldn't know. <laughs> I don't remember. You don't remember it at all. It's the worst. <laughs> the video, you guys have to go look at the video. I'll repost it. We'll send you. We repost we'll repost it, it on the That's oh, Why We Drink that's Instagram. That's a great idea. Because yeah. it's so fucking funny. I could watch that all day. It's like, <laughs> it's like okay, now click this. Click caucasian to be fair though when that baby grows up it looks just like both of us it is the creepiest thing it's very alarming like well done morph thing the best part too is that like eva was in a different hotel room (laughs) and like em and i were just fucking like comparing everyone's faces to everyone oh we did one with zach baggins we without consent used eva's face and then compared it with zach's face and then sent her what her baby would look like and And it was not looking good and like to (laughs) keep in mind this was like less than a year into her working with us and she just literally texted back at like one in the morning like lol you guys are funny we were like oh no (laughs) this poor person she's gonna run away she was not i don't know if she got us yet i think she did i think she did and i think I, in that moment she fucking did. i think she had to otherwise it's like a survival mechanism it was just kind of like fight or flight and uh-huh. she was like i'm here to fight let's I'm go here to, i'm here to morph with zach <laughs> like power rangers okay oh, but like way worse like mighty morphin <laughs> but like not mighty just creepy <laughs> okay anyway i'm sorry i have a story for you em um this is a pretty crazy one i'm excited about this okay i as well am perfect so i found this so sometimes i go in my old bookmarks i think i've said this before but i go in my old bookmarks from and that's where you drink or like in my bookmark bar whatever it's called i hear you i i'm I'm with you i'm with you thank you (laughs) and i have like all these old things that i've saved and been like oh i'll look at that someday and there was this article on ranker called crimes solved by a tiny shred of evidence by Mike Rothschild. Oh, I love that. Are you just going to cover the whole article? Because I'm not, but that I, sounds fun. But there are like 15 cases on there, and I'm like, well, I'm going to cover all of them. I know. It's always fun now with so many stories that we've covered. It's always fun to, out of nowhere, it's like Christmas, getting yes, it is. a list of stories I've never heard of mm-hmm. and being like, oh, my God, I have material for three months. This Completely. is completely so useful. And like when Ranker does like a new list where I'm like, and sometimes I'll look at one, and I'm like, oh, this sounds interesting. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I've covered all these. But like when there's like a yeah, new that angle, does oh, it's really perfect. Anyway, so this is a cool article called uh, Crime Solved by a Tiny Shred of Evidence. Fascinating to me. Um, and this is the murder of Jean Ann Childs. So actually, I found a lot of this information on, it's actually like an old case that like this year was finally solved. So it's like. You've had a lot of those recently. I know, I've noticed. Oh, well, we'll talk about why. Because the evidence, the DNA. I see, you know, I see, the, I see. All that good stuff. Um, so Generation Y, the podcast, um, they were a huge help to me because they, I don't think they did an episode on this, but they, their blog like covered it when the news was breaking. So they had a lot of like consolidated information that was really helpful. Also, thank you, New York Times, you're my everything. And Star Tribune was also really helpful. Okay, so on the evening of June 19th, 1993, a tenant in the, I believe it's pronounced Hennepin area of Minneapolis, called their property manager to report water dripping from the ceiling from the apartment above them. It wasn't water. I can tell you that right fucking now. I didn't think so either. It was water. Oh. But it is just as bad as you suspect. Okay. So they knocked and so, you know, the property manager came, tried to knock and call to the apartment. Nobody answered. So um, the apartment manager opened the room to discover the apartment flooded with water. The shower was still running. And the apartment's resident, 35-year-old Jean Ann Childs, was dead on the floor, wearing nothing but socks. And again, the shower was just running and overflowing, like, into the apartment. And that's why the water was going through. So, truly a horrific scene. Excuse me. To open the door to. Not only was she dead, she had been stabbed viciously and repeatedly. And virtually the whole apartment was soaked in blood. It had pooled around her body, spread into the bathroom, and even the bed was saturated in it. So, like... Yikes. Yeah. So I guess you're probably right. When it was leaking water, there's probably some other stuff in there, too, now that you mention it. I mean, there was definitely a body fluid. Ooh, yes. 
Um, so the bathroom looked as though someone, so obviously they call police. Uh, the bathroom looked as though someone had tried to hastily clean themselves up after the murder because the, there was a washcloth and a towel in the sink that were like soaked in blood. Um, there was blood in the sink. And of course the shower, like I said, was left on as if someone had tried to rinse off really quickly. They collected a sample of the blood, um, as well as a comforter from the bed and a t-shirt. So Jean's autopsy report revealed 38 stab wounds to her body. Oh my God. Okay. So yeah. this was personal. This I'm, gu- is, I'm guessing. It's just bad. Um, yeah, yeah, you'd think so. Um, she had been cut along her lower stomach. Okay. This is bad. She needs the belly. Uh, she does. It's really, I, I need it now. I feel I need it. it too. Yeah. Oof. Um, speaking of PMS, <laughs> Oh God. She had been cut along her lower stomach, exposing her intestines. <gasps> I'm sorry. Oh, my God. It's, it's not I'm, funny anymore. I'm sorry. I know. I it was ended. like, how do I transition into this without sounding like oh, an asshole? Oh, you don't. Asshole? You don't. I just handle it. I just apologize later. Yikes. As you do. So she exposing the intestines. There were cuts to both the front and back of her body. Um, and finally, there were deep stab wounds to her chest and stomach. The autopsy determined that the killer had continued to stab her after she had died. So just like, so just truly just like rage. Yeah. Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. Um, so police struggled to find a lead. So Jean actually worked as a sex worker at the time and would typically bring clients back to her apartment thinking her residence was safer than a motel room, you know, cause like, oh, I don't want to go somewhere sure. strange with a stranger, right. which you'd think would make sense. And so obviously this had worked, uh, up until now. Um, so they were thinking, you know, it m- might've been a client that did this to her. But that made it obviously really difficult because it could have been anyone, not even someone she knew personally, like it could have just been somebody she met on the street. And so they were very stuck. Um, The leads went nowhere. The case went cold, especially considering the victim was a sex worker and, you know, it wasn't like the type of victim, quote unquote, that received a lot of press. So this eventually went cold. And now we fast forward to 2019. Welcome. Okay. This is really fast forwarded. Really fast forward. This is the year where elephants have their drag queens have their own Christmas decorations and as they should elephants are ghosts and there's a whole world out there (laughs) yet to be explored. Yeah, that's what I heard. That's that's what we've heard. Had you had you not narrated it, I would have already had internalized all that information. (laughs) I would have been like, yeah, well, that's that's given. Yeah, well, come on. You don't need to explain it to us. Um, Okay, so 2019, 52 year old. So we're going to just like take a turn here. 52-year-old father of three, Jerry Westrom, lives in Asante, Minnesota. I hope that's how you say that. And spends his time volunteering with youth sports teams and caring for his organic farm and blogging about it. Uh, One day he's at his daughter's hockey game when he orders a hot dog at the concession stand. He enjoys his hot dog, as he had countless times in the past, Mm -hmm. then wipes his mouth with a napkin and tosses it into the trash. Okay. As he walks away, undercover police swoop in and retrieve the napkin from the trash can. I see. I see what, where this is going. Yep. What Jerry didn't know is that police had been following him since January, waiting for him to discard his own DNA so police could have it. They've been waiting since January for, like, any time for him to use a napkin? Well, it was February, so... Oh, okay. In my mind, it was July, and I was like, is this guy not well, wiping wait, his mouth? I like that you thought July, because I was like, he's eating a hot dog. It sounded like <laughs> like, a, like an American pastime. It did sound like 4th of July. Yeah. <laughs> and they've just been trailing him for six months, being like, when the fuck is he going to, yeah, like, God. use a, a fork or something? Eat a goddamn hot dog. Like, sip out of a straw once or You'd something. think so. But he has an organic farm. Maybe he doesn't want to use plastic, you know, like... Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's super eco-friendly he just like digs in with his like natural utensils yep and he keeps them in his bag his and then pocket. he sticks them right back in his pocket yep that's like me remember the time at the airport i pulled out a bunch of straws loose in my bag and you were like i don't want that <laughs> i do and i it, do it was our first tour ever to dallas our flight was, was delayed like, this is my f- this is flight one of a uh-huh. hundred we were stuck in the airport for hours i'm not gonna be able to escape her em literally was like no i'm using my plastic one that's foul and poor eva was like <laughs> Um, sure. I oh, guess I'll did. use it. She really she was. She literally used it. She must have been brand fucking new to I, this. I was like, and I promise it's clean. Oh, God. So gross. I promise it wasn't. I, I also promise it wasn't. In <laughs> retrospect. Sorry, Eva. She just like, like a, like a crazy hippie was like, here's my fistful of metal straws. I mean, Take no, one. Not even kidding. Not even a little bit kidding. <laughs> like scooping it from under the rest of the crap what in her bed. What is the matter with me? I am going to be the worst parent. <laughs> I'm just like, here, let me dig in my Louis Vuitton for all my dirty straws. Uh, 
I'm sorry, Eva. Thanks for sticking with I'm us. I'm a monster. I'm the so sorry. The day you say I quit, I'll be like, I get it. <laughs> we'll be like, finally, God. Like, that, that checks out. We don't like it, but we can't say we're surprised. You've lasted longer than we thought. Um, also, I'll probably give it to the wrong kid. I'll be like, here, here's the straws <laughs> this child. Christine, that's not our child. That's a strange child. Stop giving it dirty Stop straws. Stop putting things in that child's <laughs> mouth. It's not our child. <laughs> but his teeth are so big and clean. Okay. I'll be like, our child doesn't have teeth. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's a baby. Why don't you know this? <laughs> oh, this is horrific. Okay. <clears throat> anyway, he ate a hot dog. It was February in Minnesota, so it probably wasn't even close to July. But gotcha. Um, so please collect collect his napkin. Um, you see, despite the cold case having gone cold, police had not totally given up on the now twenty five year old case of Jean and Child. So that we're twenty five years later. DNA samples collected from the 1993 crime scene, including seminal fluid, were finally entered into a commercial genealogy database. You know the ones that caught the golden state killer yes and when the fbi ran the sample through the site in 2018 they struck a match the man whose dna matched the crime scene was jerry arnold westrom and like i said he was pretty much a pillar of the community there it is dun, dun, bingo dun. bingo they should just write pillar of the community in like files oh completely of potential suspects and then the second you see pillar of the community be like all right just like big red lock them up oh yeah yep. they're Sorry. And got really, really I got fired up. Animated. You have said that before. You're like, if you know a pillar of the community, call the police. It's like, just be. I'm not saying, like, call the police immediately. I'm just saying, be aware that you might need to call the police later yeah, on yeah. them. I'm just saying, collect their dirty napkins from the trash. You might need them later. As long as you have one piece of DNA, <laughs> just in case, that's probably best. Oh boy. So Jerry's neighbors, not shockingly, described him as a nice guy and a family man. Oh. Sorry. Birth control. I'm sorry. Is your curtain flying off of the wall now? Well, I tried to hang up the cremet sign and it got a little wonky. Did it? <laughs> I know everyone else can't tell, but there's a curtain right next to me and the curtain rod is like five inches off of the wall. <laughs> you know how I hang them up with nails? I've I described know. it to everybody. Whatever. Okay. Back to pillars of the community. Thank God I'm not one, by the way. Oh my gosh. I'd be in trouble. Thank God I'm never obviously going to be one, no matter how hard I try. Trust me. I'll never be admired by the entire community. Em, you're literally talking about your empire, so you shush. Oh, okay. Digitally, I guess I yeah, am a pillar of the community. I, know, I guess everyone should be worried, then. Yeah, I, I have enough of your DNA scattered around this freaking room with all your Starbucks Thank crash. God. If I ever become a killer, yeah. Christine will be the one to out me the quickest. From pillar to killer, the M. Schultz story. Wow, that just came in. TM, 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 TM. <laughs> Wait. I don't know. We'll talk about it later. We'll I don't talk about it later. like that that just entered my... <laughs> I, I, my breath has been taken away. <laughs> that was so wildly creative. <laughs> but I don't like how easily the story about you being a murderer, like, entered into my creative oh, space. Oh, I'm thinking, like, as, like, from a creative space, though, I like, see. you really pulled that title out of nowhere. Nobody like else used that shit. That my is guardian genius. angel just kind of, like slip that into my have you ever had this feeling i'm not gonna actually do it to you but have you ever had this feeling where like a guardian angel just like smacks you in the back a of the head with information it just million. like comes out of your mouth and you're like oh yeah that wasn't me that's really literally what happened when we were hanging out and the show was originally called eerie in theory oh mm -hmm. and some guardian angel just went and that's why we both drank of us so many and then times we were like wait a minute that's the name of the show how did we not think of that before? i'm sitting there getting a google phone number and there <laughs> our guardian angels are like why do you need a phone number you're starting a podcast like, let's just smack them they'll you, figure it out just smack them over they're not getting it anyway pillar to killer i pillar to killer that is exactly where no one else use that that's my book we're or something we're gonna make it something that's for sure we'll see um when okay so here we go when police did some digging into Jerry Westrom, they found that he had actually lived in the Minneapolis-St. Paul area where Gene had lived uh, around the time of the murder. According to his father, in 1993, Jerry was 27 years old, had been single and working in Minneapolis, but had moved away just six months after Gene Child's murder. Mm. He had been living in Asante, Minnesota. I keep wanting to say Michigan. Minnesota ever since as a small business owner and family man. He ran a blog, which I obviously found. Um, it's still there. Uh, is it, it called pillar to killer <laughs> no he's not that clever are you kidding me <laughs> um his guardian angel smacked him all like all barely the smacked him he yeah. wasn't even lucky enough for he didn't that. even get get it <laughs> um his blog is like really bad it just features like a terrible selfie of like him in a cornfield oh but like one of those where you like you had a digital camera so you couldn't really you like kind of got a selfie it was like right cropped right, right. very poorly like a dad 
completely a dad selfie. Also brave of you to criticize a killer's blog. Yeah. Mm, maybe not my prowess. I'm getting smacked. I feel it. <laughs> <laughs> Can someone also TM, TM, TM? I'm like the guardian angel smacking That's us with fun. information. I yeah. feel like that should be animated. Someone animate our guardian angels behind us. Just like, yeah. stop it. It's stop like it. your your gut your gut instinct that you have is when your literal guardian angel like karate chops you in the gut. It's like, it's like, oh, I shouldn't have done that. Oh, I've made a mistake. Yeah. I'm sorry, universe. <laughs> um, Yeah. So his blog has a very bad selfie in what appears to be a cornfield. And he lists his occupation as farmer and commodities broker. So Lord knows what that means. Okay. So police checked his criminal record and found that he had a minor criminal history, including a brief jail stint in 2016 after getting caught in a police sting, believing he was soliciting a teenager for sex. Oh, boy. So that was his criminal. So even though he was a pillar of the community, he already had that in his background, like, recently. So I don't know how. Yeah, people are ignoring people are the red flags here. Fucking oblivious, including me. I'm counting myself as one. <laughs> um, so anyway, they followed him until they finally got what they wanted, which was that dirty-ass napkin covered in his spit. Which <laughs> Finally, it took him 7,000 years. <laughs> don't we all? Um, Minneapolis police arrested Je- arrested Jerry Westrom on Monday, February 11th, 2019. Under questioning, Jerry denied any connection to the murder, claiming he had never met Gene Childs. He actually claimed that he didn't even have sex that entire year of 1993, which I'm like, it's a very specific... I mean, I guess unless you're not having sex at all, but I like... Mean, unless you're like a total fuckboy every other year of your life and you're like, oh, the dry spill of the 1974. Ni- exactly, exactly. exactly. <laughs> other than that, you really shouldn't have like a... I, I can't imagine a time where you're like, oh, yeah, I don't. Let me check my calendar. Unless you're, like, intentionally not doing it, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, I don't know. So he said he had never met Gene Childs. He hadn't actually had sex with anyone that year. But additional DNA was collected that was a match to the DNA on the washcloth in the bathroom, uh, as well as the sperm on the towel and comforter from the apartment. Disgusting. Disgusting. So when questioned as to why his DNA was found at the crime scene, he simply said, I have no idea. So, good answer. That's all you can do is just deny, 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 That's right? That's true. I mean, there's literally nothing else you can do. Um, at the hearing, which was this spring in April, Assistant Hennepin County Attorney Michael Radner said a barefoot print made in a pool of Jean's blood at the crime scene also matched Jerry's footprint. Ooh. Okay. But his defense attorney insisted that fingerprint slash footprint analysis was not fully reliable. Okay. He also argued that the appearance of the DNA in her room does not inherently make him a murderer which like technically is true and yet they still couldn't explain why his dna was in there if he didn't know her so right nice try uh jerry westrom posted his five hundred thousand dollar bail in february and was released from jail but told to stay in state he appeared in court april 2019 to ask permission to travel out of state the following month to attend two of his niece's graduation celebrations the judge, Martha Dimmick, denied the request, saying this case is extremely serious and telling Westrom, quote, the last thing he should be concerned about right now is his niece's graduations. Right. Yes, I would agree with that. Yeah. You dipshit. You literally just call them and say congratulations. And they probably won't answer because you're a fucking murderer. Also because nobody who's graduated is like, uh, is like socially available for their uncle. It's like you've got like this massive party that you're probably playing. Yeah, like th- I think they're gonna be okay that their murderer uncle, who's like on ba- out on bail, is not coming. I remember to their when graduation. I graduated. Uh, I'm well, I graduated high school, and there was this. I mean, every single day of graduation week was parties. And then if my mom said, oh, your uncle's not coming, I'd be like, good. I did not want to have to see him anyway. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to go hang out with my friends. I'm sure they miss their, like, extended relatives very much. Right. Especially the ones that were in the news for murdering a sex worker right, right, 25 right, right, right. years ago. Like, please keep him away from my friends. Yikes. I mean, honestly. Um, and there was actually, I didn't even include this, but there was actually someone who was interviewed who said they were in one of his, like, youth teams or youth groups or something who said they he would make the girls feel uncomfortable or he she worked for him that's what it was at one of his um stores or companies i forget what it was and she said he only hired young women like really young women and he often commented on their bodies and okay. made them all uncomfortable so you don't want him at your graduation anyway but Gross. he tried and it didn't work so uh his next court appearance was scheduled for june 6 2019 but literally since April, there has been no news whatsoever. I looked everywhere. Um, I'll keep my eye out. I don't know if it was postponed. Like, I don't know what happened. But um, as of right now, 
we have not heard what is going on. Got it. Um, once again, this case, like I love, uh, points to the increasing use of DNA to crack unsolved cases. In 2017, DNA evidence helped Minneapolis poli- police catch another man who was responsible for the murder of a teenager that had taken place 34 years ago. Got it. On the morning of April 2nd, 1983, 17-year-old Lori Mestald's body was found lying next to the Sioux Line Railroad tracks in Minneapolis. She had been strangled and raped, but had died of a massive blow to the head. Her purse was missing, and she wasn't wearing shoes or a coat, leading police to think she may have been murdered elsewhere and then brought to that point, and the case ran completely cold. Finally, 34 years later, police were able to arrest 62-year-old Daryl Bruce Ray, who is believed to have been involved in a number of unsolved cases in the area, ranging from rape to murder. Oh. Yeah. Woof. Um, and Jerry Westrom's arrest this year came less than two months after Minneapolis police announced they had arrested and charged a man in a 27-year-old stabbing of 20-year-old Belinda Thompson in 1991. So all these old cases are, like, finally... And the guys are still alive, which is just, I mean, great, because they're finally yeah. getting caught. It's just... Yeah, there would be some real disappointment and if they had like already died and then don't ha- yep. you know, get their justice yep. or the other people don't get their justice the closure yeah completely um in fact according to the new york times researchers believe that in the coming years 90 percent of americans of european descent white americans will be identifiable even if they have not submitted their own dna so they wow. think like through family members uh 90 percent of the white americans will be able to be wow identified by their dna which is just wild. Cool. And so there's a lot of, like, obviously ethical stuff going on, too, because it's, like, how much can the government use this? Right, without consent and all that. Right. And, like, especially if it's a relative who submitted it. I right. Mean, and, of course, with the case of this, you know, you're like, of course I want to catch up serial rapist or murderer, you know, but right, it, right, it just right. gets iffy when you kind of delve <clears throat> into it for other reasons. Yeah. So things are picking up. So uh, if you're a fucking criminal, watch your back, because... Woo-hoo. Science is coming for you. Well, as a pillar of the community, at least on Twitter, <laughs> I should be nervous now. Yeah, watch the fuck sure. out, dude. Uh oh. Only use those dirty straws I gave you. <laughs> <laughs> those are actually the only murder weapons I've ever used. Oh, no, they they should be. They probably are murder weapons. <laughs> oh my god. Um. Okay. So this past spring, the Star Tribune interviewed C.C. Moore, chief genealogist at Paragon Nano Labs. According to Moore, since spring 2018, about 50 cold cases in the United States have been solved using public genealogy websites. Oh, wow. That's a lot. She explained, quote, genetic genealogy has incredible power for human identification. It's revolutionary for law enforcement. There's really no reason for there to be serial killers or serial serial killers or serial rapists anymore. We should be able to identify them much more quickly and stop them from victimizing people. Yes. So let's hope that is true. And in the meantime, that is the story of the murder of Jean Ann Child, finally solved this year. Yay! Woof! So thank you, Ranker, for that article. Very good. Very, yeah, very good. That is my story. Uh, good job. Thank you. Good you job. too. That was a fun one. It was fun. I think when you bring in, like, elephants and drag queens, it really can't not be fun. Yeah, you really, like, hyped us up in the beginning before I dragged everyone back down. Yeah. That is the, the theme here. It's no wonder you're the fun one. <laughs> maybe i I'm mean the downer <laughs> i think i don't think it's you i think it's just the content i think it's like i get to talk about drag queens more often and you, even if like they're not part of my story i just demand people listen to me talk about drag queens a lot and if i do they're usually a victim of a crime so right yeah, exactly very sad we fig- we cracked the code yep um well thank you everybody for listening to this episode and if you're watching it thank you this is the first hopefully uninterrupted episode we've done it has not stopped recording as far as i can tell so yeah, Yahoo. we got a new we got a new camera so that we don't have to keep getting up every doing technical time. difficulties, which should make the audio smoother too because I don't have to pause and get up every time. Um, also, I'm noticing that in frame this whole time everyone has noticed my pants, so oh. I feel like <laughs> I need to explain them. This was one of my impromptu Canadian purchases I love when it. we went to Vancouver. Um, I like them because they look like they're straight out of the 70s. I feel like I s- do. It, swiped them from like my grandma's cabin. It looks like a cool hand me down and. Uh, it's got a bunch of little beavers canoeing and sitting in Adirondack chairs. With a moose. There's a, a moose and, and another bear also canoeing. The Adirondack chairs are so cute. But so they're they're in a canoe and, and the the it says canoe tuck me in. I mean they're really made for him. I mean they're my they're definitely pajama pants, although it is definitely three o'clock on a weekday and I'm I went out in public to get to my car to then drive over. Oh, here. don't worry. I think we're all in the same boat. I think canoe, I'll, if you will. Listen, <laughs> 
Don't you dare. So stupid. I'm pretty sure everyone uh, in my neighborhood has seen me in these pants too many times. Yeah. So at this point, they've just become normal pants that I probably look like I'm a crazy person, but that's okay. No, you look so normal all the time. Pillar of the community, if you will. (laughs) Pillar to killer. Okay. (laughs) Pillar to killer. Uh, Thank you guys for listening. Uh, You can find all of our info at and that's why we drink.com or you can submit your personal true crime and paranormal stories um at and that's why we drink at gmail.com where you can be in the running for, to be mentioned in our next listeners episode we put those out on the first of every month yay um we also have uh instagram twitter um you can also find our patreon at atwb podcast yes. oh yes sorry i stopped listening no. <laughs> Excellent. I was thinking about Kremit. <laughs> <laughs> and also you can find our child um, <laughs> oh God. on our Instagram. That's true. It will be. We will post that to our Instagram, uh, what our child actually looks like. And maybe someday I'll get verified and you can look at mine too. Yay. But and until then, that's that why we, we drink. drink. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>